Jenny Biggs. I'm a CPS parent of three and I'm here for Raise Your Hand today. Uh, agree with what Erin just said. Um, good morning. Thank you for live streaming. Thank you for the changes to the meeting format, especially the public discussion of agenda items before voting. Uh, vote yes today on allowing a month for public review and comments before taking a vote on proposed changes to CPS policies. Something else to consider, a neutral third party to answer procedural questions and to answer questions on the item to be voted on and its finer details. This became apparent during the SQRP discussion and vote last month. Blocks Together and Raise Your Hand hosted an event, Schools as Anchors, Communities Planning for Their Schools. We learned about best practices and planning for school facilities and programming from local experts and from national expert Mary Filardo of the 21st Century School Fund. In 2018, a new state law mandated planning for vacant and under-enrolled schools. Through workshops, parents and community members learned best practices for the joint use of buildings, proposing new attendance boundaries, developing new programs to recruit students, and potential school mergers. A state law passed in 2011 requires CPS to create and implement a community-informed educational facilities master plan, or EFMP, every five years. We are completing year one of the 2018 EFMP. There are specifications in the law about a timeline and it mandates community engagement to ensure that school communities have a say in the planning for their schools. The EFMP is required by law. The annual regional analysis or ARA is not and is unnecessary. We have some questions regarding the school resource officers or SROs. If LSCs will be involved in the decision making process, how will this work? What is the timeline? Will there be special meetings for LSCs? What happens if the LSC is an ALSC? If the school elects to not have SROs, will they get comparable resources to spend on alternate staffing or programming? When will you be hosting meetings on the roles and necessity of social workers in our schools and hiring more? Ms. How can LSCs, I'm finishing, and principals get more social workers? We're really concerned about the um, quote unquote school safety rating that CPS may or may not be implementing soon for individual schools. It's come up here at Board of Ed meetings uh, in months prior. Um, will the presence or absence of an SRO factor into whatever this rating policy might be that could be in development right now? And won't a rating policy impact or influence the decision making process of this whole entire SRO thing? Thank you. Thank you.